Welcome to the Wedding Pros Podcast. I got a special guest here today. Jared is not here because he's gallivanting around the world, hanging out in Japan. Um, and I am here with David Lee today of um, David Lee Photography, David Lee Video. But we'll say davidlee.co is his Instagram um, handle if you want to go check out his work. He's an incredible videographer. Uh, photographer and I kind of got to know David from just the the internet we'll say Facebook all these different groups and um, I'd always see he was working with people who I really respected and his work was also really good and then the other thing is he seemed to be quite a significant nerd which I really appreciated because I could see there was just a level of appreciation for the technical part of what we do that I really resonate with because I myself am a nerd as well. And so um, I just was like, hey, David, um, we, we got connected in real life at, um, at Vision Quest. And I was like, we, you should do a podcast with us. And he was like, yes, I want to do this. I have something I want to say. And so we're doing it today. So what's up, David? What's up, dude? How Thanks for doing? having me. Yeah, man. Um, so for those that don't know um, you, why don't you tell us a little bit about your creative journey how'd you get into weddings and um i mean maybe even farther back than that if you think it's necessary how'd you get into being a creative uh i think it started when like i wanted to be an artist but couldn't draw for crap like drawing <laughs> is still not like a forte for me at all so it was kind of like a fake it so you make it kind of scenario with like photography and then just like slowly became something that was like oh hey i really enjoyed doing this um and then like fast forward a couple of years uh henry and i met at a uh, at, a, at, a, at a club called The Door, and I was shooting photos for my buddy's band, and uh, Henry's band was actually opening. He was playing drums at the time, and not a lot of people actually know this story. Um, so, so that's how I met Henry. We were like <laughs> probably 14 years old, dude, if you can imagine that. And uh, we connected over MySpace when that was still a thing. What kind of band? Him, what kind of band did Henry play in? Uh, dude, I could not remember, <laughs> man. It wasn't like it wasn't like punk rock or anything, or like metal. <laughs> was it emo? It was kind of like. No, it was like indie. Okay. You know, it, it's like, you know, church, church dudes like that wanted to be in a band. That's kind of what they were. Yeah. Like, but secular, kind of that vibe. Yeah. It's like, so, we don't swear, but we're in a cool band. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like we're in a band, like we're doing this. <laughs> and so uh, that, so, you know, I sent him some photos of the band and whatever, and we connected and then like started playing at the church he was at. And that's kind of how like Henry and I became like super good friends, you know, and that was over 11 years ago, I think even longer. Um, and so Long story short, uh, a couple years later, like I left the church and then uh, Henry reached out to me probably when I was like freshman year of college or sophomore year. And he was like, hey, dude, I need someone to help me shoot a wedding. Like, I know you shoot photos. Like, this is going to be a really different thing for you. But like, would you be down? And I was like, yeah, dude, I haven't spoken to you in like 80 years, but sure, <laughs> let's do this. And so we catch up in whatever. And we're shooting on GH3s and I'm shooting on a Nikon D600 on video like doesn't even do 1080 60 like what is life <laughs> and uh he was on a glide cam dude i remember it so vividly it was our first wedding at like a, a volume brand um like you know estate kind of thing and like it was a really cool experience but i just remember it being so funny because like looking back we had no idea what we were doing and like <laughs> you want to talk about like the ultimate mix matching of cameras we had a nikon a black magic for stationary and a gh3 like the what? old the original pocket Dude, no, no, the, he had the 2.5K. Oh, the, like, the like cinema. cinema? Yeah, <laughs> dude. And so it was like, I was like, what is this? It's so cool. <laughs> oh, wow. What? Oh, trust me, it'll look really good in post. <laughs> but it's so tight. <laughs> like, that crop factor was insane. Um, yep. But, yeah, so that kind of just, like, brought me to, to this point where Henry and I, from then on, like, worked together ever since. And um, I, I would say, like, Henry Weddings was kind of our, our, our baby um, you know, even though the name was Henry Weddings, like I, I put in just as much effort as if it was my own. Um, and that was kind of like the, the start of something like super different for us, I think. Yeah. You know, and, and possibly for the industry too, I, I'd hope. So, so you tell me about some of the people you second shot for, or we'll call it second shooting for now, but, um, uh, because I think that's an interesting thing about your journey. I think you're like the professional second shooter in some ways. Like you do your own work and it's incredible, but you also have had like, <clears throat> I think you've shot for like so many people. It seems like you have like a pretty good reputation in the industry as being like, the, hey, bring in, bring in David. 
<laughs> no, for sure. I, I think it's been super fortunate of having like, just honestly, part of it is having business owners who are also artists and like, um, they're, they're masters of their own craft, um, especially in our area. And so like working with Henry was obviously a huge deal. Um, you know, I work with Mark Roberts who you worked with yesterday Yes. at, you know, what you just told me was like a seven person wedding. <laughs> like I don't even know how to process that. <laughs> it was, it but, was uh, weird. <laughs> It was um, it was weird in a cool way. I'll say that it was it was beautiful, yeah, but it was it's it was intimate, <laughs> unique. Yeah, super intimate. Like, you, you, are you part of that seven or it was that no? Seven and I wasn't part of seven. It was literally three creatives and five people in the audience and three people on stage. Oh my gosh, that's so weird. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I've second shot with Mark too. And like, uh, I've, I've second shot with a lot of people for more so photos and video, ironically. Um, like I've shot second shot with Tyler branch for like an insane wedding. I think I've ever shot, dude. It was like a, it was a gay wedding and the, the groom was a, uh, a writer for Marvel and the other groom was a like home interior designer for Hollywood. And so like anyone who's anybody behind the scenes, like a, like an insane gaffer was probably there and I had no idea. <laughs> um, but, you know, sh so shooting like those weddings all the way up to like the ones that I still shoot occasionally where it's like, you know, close friends that are needing a favor, you know, which I still do from time to time. Uh, it's it's kind of crazy, like being able to see both sides of it and realizing like it's kind of the same uh, in the sense of like it's the same day for, for them, you know, mm -hmm. like it's there's all no people. difference regardless. It's all people. Um, but you know, I, I think it's been like a huge blessing for me to be able to work with, uh, a lot of different photographers, uh, second shooting for photos, uh, the video side, not as much. Cause I think Henry and I collectively have shot together well over a hundred weddings together. Um, you know, since the inception of Henry weddings. Uh, so it's kind of like second shot a lot. Yes. But it was more so like defining that craft for his brand, mm -hmm. you know, so which I think was like a really big deal. So let's think about that a little. So. You are supporting, I think support shooter is a better way to put it even. Um, but because second shooting, it, it has a connotation, right? So yeah. what do you think is the stigma that goes with saying to people, I'm a second shooter? Like, why do people have such like a negative idea towards that? Uh, I mean, the, the name in itself, like your second you know, it's like, if you're not first, you're last. <laughs> it's, if you're not first, you're, you're second. You still suck. You know, like whether or not people say that directly or not, like it, it just comes off a certain way. But, but, you know, Henry and I have kind of gotten to the thing now where like we call the seconds executive producers, um, which is probably now that I've been to Vision Quest and like actually know what that means is probably totally off. Um, should probably be changed to like a, a proper like DP or something. That's a lot more yeah. know, professional, mm -hmm. but you, you get my drift. And, um, it for me i've realized like when, when when i think second shooting i think oh sick i can like not have to put it as much work <laughs> you, you or know you're like, putting in there. more of your effort into something that you find more creatively satisfying than having yeah well yeah and it's i, I think for like I, i've second shot for some people early on and like they kind of i went into it was ready to like go all like balls to the walls and they're like hey i just need you to hold this shot or do a tripod shot or like do something that what I would call is a liability shot. It's, it's the shot in case I like all stuff goes to hell and yeah. like, I need a safety shot. Like that's you make sure that and it's like, it doesn't fall apart. Yeah. Like just make sure like if I die and the stationary is not running that you hit record mm -hmm. and it's like, okay, cool. But like, that's not, I mean, it's, it's your film. So whatever, like you do what you want me to do. Um, but I think at this point, um, and, and I'm not saying this out of arrogance, but I think I'm probably one of the few people I can say that I, anybody would probably hire me at this point, like, and, and trust me to be fully creative and do what I want to do while still getting the job done in a way that fits the style of whoever I'm shooting for. So when you think, we'll just use the term cause I think it makes sense to most people. And when you think second shooter, what what do you think about then? What what do you when someone says, "Hey, will you second shoot with me?" What does that mean to David Lee? Uh, well, it means I would I would like to think it means that you need a another lead shooter like immediately, like at least that's why I'm going into it because I think part of the thing that second shooters don't think about is you are representing the brand you shoot with, um, and and at a moment's notice, if something happens and your first shooter isn't there, 
you have to step up and be the first shooter and get the content that they need. Mm -hmm. Like, and that is, is ultimately to me, like a way better insurance policy in regards to like a backup, you know? Well, and Um, let's even think about the films. If you don't know who Henry Martins is, um, he's pretty good. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> he's all and, right <laughs> and um he, they do he, he does really great work when you watch those films many of the shots that are iconically henry martin's are actually david lee it's a combination of both totally <laughs> for sure totally yeah. but it's not just henry and like yeah i'm sh- that was important to henry and david that that be the case that the shots that henry is getting and the shots that david are getting complement one another and I'm sure there's a unique voice in each of them. I'm sure you both have your own way of shooting, um, and you probably p- make fun of each other about it. But <clears throat> All the time. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, it's like you were enhancing his brand. You weren't just yeah. – you like you weren't – he wasn't viewing it like – because I know some guys who will just like only use a second shooter's footage when theirs doesn't work. Yep, 100%. And, Absolutely. And it's like that isn't what Henry was looking to do. Yeah, for sure. He was like, I I need you to come in and actually help me create this piece. Well, and that was what was interesting with that relationship because, you know, when when we started out, he was better at editing. Like, I immediately out the gate was just more experienced with weddings because I had shot it four years before he started, you know, with photos. Like, I at least know the day really well. And so it was a little easier for me to navigate and be a little more creative in terms of, like, that. Now, exploring going from photos to video and shooting you know, motion picture was a very different, uh, as, you know, facet of the creativity side. And I think, uh, you know, I, I would a hundred percent, um, attribute like my success and where I'm at to Henry in regards to like our relationship and the, um, the things that we've had talks about and just being able to like push each other during the day, because like, you know, with second shooting, I think there's like a notion for me in my head. That's like, I want them to regret not hiring me if I can't do it, you know what I mean? Like, Mm -hmm. and it's not an ego thing, but it's like, I want to know that like I'm the best in my industry, regardless of whether or not it's my own brand or not. Like people in the industry know, like I shoot well, you know? Um, and I, and to me, like I take a lot of pride in that. And that's, that's kind of like a reputation that I, I want to maintain. Um, so that regard, the, when I, I view myself as a pretty mediocre shooter. Um, nah, (laughs) No, <laughs> trust me. That's all my other people's work. If you watch, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not the best shooter. I'm a good producer. I'm a good editor, but I'm not a great shooter. Um, and for me, the part I'm always like, what? Cause I don't get to shoot as much as a lot of other guys do like with like actually shooting weddings. Um, you know, I'm, I'm lucky if I can get 20 weddings in, in the year. Um, and I am always like, for me, the hardest part about shooting is the tactile, like the physical part, right? Like you, yeah. you get the move the way you want it. You, you know, even just like, how am I going to position this? How am I going to distribute the weight? How, like, cause all that re- factors into how the shot looks. hundred percent. And, and so if they're, tell me a little bit about your preferred way of shooting. Cause I, we can get really nerdy here. And like, I think oh, this is totally, this is what people, I think like, if you're out there listening, I would, you're a camera op. Like, yeah. hundred percent at the, at the core and of a DP. <laughs> yeah, that's true. As, yeah, totally. But as, as a camera operator and as a person who has a very close relationship with the equipment, what are, what are you rocking these days? And, and, and like, what has been maybe the biggest tip that you would give other people into how they can shoot better shots. Two questions. Man, I think it's I think it's uh, not being glued to to your own process and understanding that the process is constantly changing, mm-hmm. um, which kind of indirectly answers your question in the sense that like I my my shooters who shoot with me know like oh man it's not a David wedding unless we're doing something different <laughs> like regards in regards to gear you know like I've I've thrown them under so many curveballs like I've switched from Zeiss to Sigma 1835s to Tamron to like going to shoulder rig going back to easy rig trying monopods like and this is in the span of like six months <laughs> you know and this last one I just shot was on shoulder rig um on the Sigma 1835 which I've only done one other time um and uh you know I think it just depends on like 
what is the day going to be like? Um, and I think ultimately it boils down to, do you know what those things are supposed to do and what, how they function? Mm -hmm. Like monopods definitely have a certain look to them. Mm -hmm. And also like they have a look to them when you use them as a counterweight, mm -hmm. when you pick them up and use it, you know, like it has its own look. But, like, the easy rigs too, again, like they're incredible tools, but that's what they are. They're just tools. And so, I think for me, like I just... It, it, I'm very, very temperamental when it comes to gear. <laughs> like, I'm going to shoot whatever's going to make me feel good that day. Ultimately, I think is what it boils down to. But I think that that is really what equipment is. Is like, even, either you're the type of person who's always thinking, this could be better, right? Oh, I'm using something new. It, it is better. Even then you go look at the footage later. Maybe you're like, yeah, it was the same, but I felt better. And, yeah. And the other ones are people who are like, I'm comfortable with this. It feels better. But, yeah. but I think either way, um, everyone is dealing with the fact that you cannot remove how you feel um, from what you're doing. And I think like the tactile part of shooting and the relationship between what you're physically doing and how you're feeling, I think is, is really understated. Like it's, it's like a connection. Yeah. And you have to wrestle with that connection. Yep. I, I probably spend, I don't know, just probably a couple hours a week re-rigging equipment. Oh, 100%, dude. All the time. Like, can I make it better? Can I make it cleaner? <laughs> or like, did I, like, oh, I love how when I got that cable run. Yeah. <laughs> just for, <laughs> like it's, it's hidden and it's like, looks super clean. Yep. And, but it's not going to become unplugged and it's not going to get damaged. And, or yeah. like my favorite thing is when I give a rig to Jared and he's like, oh yeah, that I, I'll, cause he doesn't want to like mess with that crap. He just wants to pick it up yeah. and have it work the way he yeah. wants it to work. And he'll be like, I hate this or I like this. And that's it. Yeah. <clears throat> I want to mess with it. I want to wrestle with it. And I'm always like, the thing I struggle with is I'm like, when I pick up a rig, I'll be like, oh yeah, this feels great. <laughs> and then you go use it. You're like, this is horrible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, or, or like you back, you backpedal and you're like, oh my gosh, this was a bad idea. <laughs> Why did I do this? <laughs> Wait, which is funny that you mentioned the whole gear thing too. Cause like, uh, I, I always, I texted you and the first thing that popped up was the tilt of V mount thing, which I ironically bought. Like I actually have it on my rig right next to me, which is like so funny to me that it kind of came full circle with the, because I remember us talking about V mounts for the black magic pockets. And I was like, oh, man, I ended up buying it. <laughs> oh, man. I find, like, man, and I'm like, I have no idea. This might be losing my whole audience because we're talking about V-mount batteries. But I don't care because I like it. <laughs> <laughs> so if you don't like it, go somewhere else. Uh, no, no, stay. Don't, don't leave. But, <laughs> don't but, leave. But seriously, like, I'm sure every one of us with either a photographer or a videographer I, I really feel the same way about anything. As a musician, I feel this way. And I, and I feel like maybe that's where it came from for me. Because I'm always like, what if I try a lighter gauge string? Yeah. Do I want my bridge to be a little, like, what kind, how much relief do I want? And how much, like, that, like, wrestling with the equipment is part of the creative process. Yeah. Like, and, and I there's a certain feel to it, too. Like, I, for example, like, you can't, you can't play on, um, you can't play on nines and expect to get a good thick slide tone. <laughs> you know, like it just doesn't work that way. Um, then, then it's like trying to find that fine balance of like, Oh, and I think that like, that's, that's a good point though, in the sense of like, understand that, that is part of your creative process mm -hmm. is like, am I emotionally inspired on a day where honestly, let's be honest, there are some really basic weddings yeah. and you need something to kind of push you through. Um, and you know, I just got the focus seven, which is like beautiful. And I think like this last wedding, like that probably paid a pretty big part as to why like the shots I got were the shots I got. What has been some of the creative, cause we're talking about challenging yourself really, but also inspiring yourself um, to shoot differently, to shoot better yeah. through how you use equipment as a part of your creative process. And what has been kind of the things that have been inspiring you lately? Um, man, I think a big part has been um, like, it, it's been like being super intentional with like, uh, looking at more cinema that I would normally never watch was, is one of them. And actually like looking at it in a very technical way, like I'm not watching it for the edit. I'm watching it purely for lighting. Like, because I think what, what has been like a huge, uh, 
impact for me is realizing that every shot that, that I like fall into that I love is making me feel a certain way. And I think part of that process is stopping it and pausing and going, well, why? Yeah. Why do and I like, like this? What, what, like why, why, why is it appealing to me? Um, because I, th I think, and one of the things that I've really trained my shooters and like, honestly, I think the process inspires me more than the actual result at this point. Um, and I say that to say, like, I have two other shooters, Harley and Manny. Um, it's what we have a text group called the minorities because we're, we're all not white. Um, nice. <laughs> and, and, you know, I, I constantly am sending them screenshots and feedback, but I think the, the most important thing that I'm trying to instill into them is like how to harness the vision that you see, like, don't shoot the way people see. Like, because you can't interpret what's going on through their head, but, but there are certain things that instinctively you look at and you like, and it's important to take a step back and go, why? Like questioning the why in that. And so for me, when it goes to like going through a wedding day or anything like that, that's, that's constantly the case is like, why? Um, and to me, the challenge of finding that is like so much more fruitful down the road because now I can go into it and I'm not trying to necessarily replicate the same lighting, but I'm trying to create the same instance or the same moments in regards to how I prep for that time in my head mentally and knowing that like the first shot that I'm probably going to get isn't going to be what I want, but it's going to get me closer to the end result in that regard. And I know that's kind of like a really mental way of thinking about it, but um, you know, thinking for the edit, like th my goal has always been to outshoot whoever I'm shooting. You know, like then that that's the challenge and knowing also too, like Henry and I shot a wedding two weeks ago. Um, he was on handheld rig and I was on an easy rig. And so I instantly knew uh, there are certain shots that I can get that he can't, especially since we're on differing focal lengths. And so my goal is to make sure that anytime I shoot with anybody, especially in the rig like that, where I can move fast is getting as many moments as I can. And like realizing that one, the day isn't just about the bride and groom, it's about the people and creating that story for the editor. And to me, like knowing that I can go home and he's going to text me like, dude, the stuff that you got made the edit so much more contextual is like what motivates me to stay inspired with like sh out shooting people. Mm. And it's, and th that's like the constant thing is like, I want to be able to outshoot anyone I shoot with is like, and like just have that constant battle. And I think it keeps it fun well, between the main shooter and the, the, the quote unquote secondary. So you're, I love the way you're putting it because I think for all of us. So yesterday was the first time I've ever second shot a wedding. <laughs> no way. Yeah. I've never, I've never second shot. I have, may, maybe I've second shot. I, when I shoot with Jared, I don't really think of it as second shooting. It's two leads. Yeah. I like, cause we both own the company and I just don't think of right. it that way. So maybe I guess that would technically be second shooting. Um, sure. But, but, but I've never like just worked with another person who wasn't my own company. Yeah. That was the first time I've ever shot a wedding for someone else. Mark's a good guy to do it with though. Yeah. Well, what's funny is like, I was like trying to pull out of him like, Hey Mark, what are you trying to capture? I want to enforce it. I want to tell the story the way you want to tell it. I'm shooting the bride during getting ready. And like, I could see like every, like his way of thinking about his project was so different than the way I think about it. Like, yeah. cause when I think about a wedding, I'm always thinking about, components that are fixed positions because I, I just maybe i'm cynical but i look at everyone and i'm like they're all the same <laughs> sure and there's nothing wrong with that either yeah i'm like they're all the same consistent. you're gonna shoot the same things i want to shoot this this way shoot this this way and i'm trying to break out of that a little because with what we want to do that is a more high end I, we have more time and and all these reasons we want to, I want to not think of it that way, but it was really interesting to me because, um, and he's a really good shooter and he created the relationship with the client that created a really good vibe and it was awesome. I had a lot of fun, but it was so interesting to me to step inside someone else's head for a day when yeah. it's not my thing. Right. Like, how do you deal with that when you're like, when you know, it's not your thing. Cause I'm an editor at heart. So I'm always thinking, how am I going to edit this? Yeah. And then I'm shooting his thing for him and I'm like, I have no idea how he's going to edit this. I don't even know what he needs really. <laughs> yeah. I'm just sure. going to shoot and, what I think is right. And it probably doesn't help too that Mark is the most laid back guy that you'll ever meet when it comes to shooting. He's like, just, just do whatever you want, man. Just do what feels good. It's like, I, that doesn't help me at all, Mark. <laughs> like give me some kind of direction. Um, but you know, I think with, with that, like it becomes a, 
uh, an understanding of like, okay, well, what am I here for? Uh, and, and Henry brought up a really good point recently. Uh, he was like, dude, we didn't shoot anything wider than a 50 for like the first three years of Henry weddings. Like we just didn't like the widest lens we had was a 50 and that's all we shot like 50, 85. And, um, we kind of broke it down this way. Um, I think it's really important for a quote unquote lead shooter. We'll say the, the owner of the brand to focus on the contextual side. We'll call them a, like a, they're really like the DP. They're the creative director. They're more like the, the, the producer, I feel. Or the That's director, true. Yeah. They could, they could be yeah. even the producer, but they're telling you this is what it is, and they're probably editing it. Yeah. Probably they'll um, be editing it. Yeah, but like, the thing with Henry and I that we established, and I think it's a really good model for anyone who's out there who's uh, wanting to use second shooters more avidly, um, is like understanding that your role uh, needs to be identified. Like, I think a lot of these guys will go into wedding cinematography, and I know a handful, and there's nothing wrong with it, but I think it's stressful when you have to shoot both the contextual and the details. And I say that in saying, like, I shot 85 for the better half of my film career, I would say, or tighter. Um, And Henry shot 50 mil pretty much his whole career, and he still shoots 50 now. Um, But, you know, there was was just an unspoken understanding that he was going to shoot the contextual stuff, like the setting, or the people in the setting and I was going to shoot the really tight detail stuff. And the best way we explained it was that if, if the job of two shooters is to write a book together and, and if you want to bring something valuable to the table, don't give them another sentence that says the same thing, you know, yeah. like don't tell me that's like they're walking through the door. She's walking through the door. <laughs> it, it's cool. Like, okay, you gave me two different sentences, but they do the exact same thing. I can't move from that as opposed to saying, uh, you know, uh, she walks through the door gracefully as she strolls through the elevated doors is a very different sentence. And I say that in saying that Henry would shoot her walking in. I would shoot those doors moving. It adds some extra context and detail and something I would say is more tangible and visceral to the edit. And I think that's why Henry Wedding slash the Brothers Martins is where they're at today is because we established that so early on in understanding that these the, like the two shots like the way you don't shoot the same thing is to shoot the same thing differently mm-hmm. well you and know. also like so th- this is really tying in on a really good thing and it doesn't always work a lot of people i say like when we do stop go love some of our seconds are people who i would consider they're not quite there they're not lead yeah. shooters yet and that is one way to do it and that's okay like some some um you're talking about a role where both of those people are technically at the same skill level. Probably, but you hopefully. know, we weren't though. We, we, we weren't though. And that was kind of what made it work was in, in some instances shooting wider was a little easier. Definitely. Because, you, because you were getting more context, even though Henry was technically the lead shooter and I was the second, uh, it was almost my job to get the more creative shots because he was heavily leaning on it to get him through these edits. Um, and that's not to say though, like we didn't push each other. And like, I would say at this point, like, it's it's pretty much neck and neck between the two of us. Like we both we both have a very distinct way we shoot, and we both respect the boundary um, of like how we we see things, but also giving each other space to create. Yep. And I think that's one thing that made it really different for for Henry in regards to treating me as a as an associate shooter, so to speak. In that, um, you know, if I wanted to get something, he would let me have the opportunity to do it because he valued it. Well, and I'm speaking towards the leader side too. If you're the leader, if you're the person who's hiring the the uh, associate, um, whether they're an employee or a c- contractor or maybe a regular contractor, whatever it is, um, your job is to give, is to define the job. If you can define yep. to them and say, hey, this is what it looks like to make this product. This is what I need you to do. But not just tell them, like, like say, hey, I would love you on this focal length focusing on this type of subject matter. And I think what most of us do is we say, hey, I'm going to go to the guys, you go to the girls. How about it? (laughs) (laughs) That's pretty much it. And, and, and by the way, I like that is the appropriate use of a second shooter too. There's nothing wrong with, yeah, absolutely. With with like split. That's part of why you get a second. And so you can go do one thing and I can do it, go do another. But I think like, ultimate form two shooters working together (laughs) is when you are 
both shooting the same thing at the same time differently and better. Right. Oh, a hundred percent. That like, it, okay, great. You go here. I go here. In my opinion, we should be at least kind of knowing what we're going to do so we can, when I put the edit together, like I don't want him shooting one all handheld and weird and I'm shooting everything on a tripod and then like edits really right. weird. You should yeah. define that. But I think a lot of people forget about what are we going to do when we're together? How yeah. do we make our stuff really dope so that like we're together? And I think if you're working with people who are seconds who aren't quite to the place where you really can trust them. Um, that's okay. But I do think for a lot of us, we should be striving to get shooters who I can tell you this. And cause we had him on before rich Ferry um, was on a podcast and he's a, he's a Northeastern guy. I always say he's the um, best wedding videographer you've never heard of um, <laughs> because he just doesn't care about yeah, he cares about his clients and doing a good job, but he's a DP. He does work for brands and he yeah. just does weddings kind of that's a part of who he is, but his main passion is commercial cinematography. Yeah. He's a really, really, really good shooter, like a beast. And we bring, I'll bring him in and I don't care if I use 80% of his footage. That's why I'm hiring <laughs> him because yeah. he's good. And, yeah. and I, and I'm going to like give him full, like, I'm not going to tell him what to do. Yeah. I'm going to be like, you tell me what you need to succeed and, and I'll work <laughs> around it. And like, yeah. I feel like, like that's, that's a different experience for me is yeah. hiring someone like that and working with someone like that, where I'm saying like, Hey, I'm going to be doing the edit. I'm going to handle the client relationships. I'm going to manage the storytelling. So I yeah. need, I need the story to be this. I need, and, and like, here's two or three shots I need. But other right. than that, do your thing. Yeah. It's like, that's new for me. And it's like, if you're a lead, if probably we find out most of the people listening to this who are uh, running wedding cinematography businesses find themselves probably more on the side where they're hiring people who maybe either can't run their own brands, maybe shoot, not, they're not as experienced as them. Maybe. So what would be your advice to that person who maybe finds their self in that, they're that second shooter that gets called who really isn't up to the level of the lead and they're, they're, they're new. They're in, cause I do believe second shooting is the best way to become a good shooter. Oh, a hundred percent, man. And I, and I think if I was a new shooter, I think the, the one thing that I would want, you know what, it's a hard question to answer because I think it leans more so on the lead shooter at that point to me, at least like, if, if your lead shooter isn't giving you the opportunity to create, it's probably someone you don't want to keep shooting with, hmm. you know, like, it, because I think ultimately as some, someone who shoots with me, I want to make sure that one, they understand the brand, they understand my intent and that they're able to show up and, and be the brand with me mm -hmm. and not just a hired gun. And I think it's a very different experience because the two guys who I, who work with me both own their own production company. And there's no intent on their end to ever screw me. And it has nothing to do with like competitiveness or anything like that, but it's that I'm, I've, in, I've spent time investing into their life and their creative process and walking them through that, that they are, you know, for lack of a better word, loyal, mm -hmm. you know, like, like they would never screw me or stab me in the back. And to me, it's like, if, if you're, if you want to have a get good, a good shooter, that's going to do what you want them to do which is ultimately be the best shooter they can be. You have to put them in the place to do that. So you and would, would you call that, would you say just to summarize, like if you're a new in the industry, find a mentor. Hundred, find someone who you look up to that cinematically can be someone that will mentor you mm -hmm. into being a great shooter, regardless of whether or not you're going to go off and do your own thing or keep shooting with them or both. Mm hmm you know, I, I think on a business standpoint, Ray Rowan would be like, no, that's a really bad idea. <laughs> don't, don't create competition. But on the flip side too, like competition is great. Um, but I, I think on a business standpoint, it might be a really dumb thing to say, but, uh, you know, I think on a, on well, that's a, on just, a it, we're talking about, not for me, the business owner, I'm talking about for yeah. the, the, the shooter who wants to for, become for the a shooter, good shooter. Yeah. And it's, it sucks because I don't think there's a lot of people out there, honestly, on a first shooter standpoint that is going to, that, that knows how to do that. Well, you know, like, no, it doesn't benefit most of us to make other people compete with us. I mean, if you see it that way, but I think to me, like they're not competing with me. 
which is like a beautiful thing. Like they, they aren't mm -hmm. like, we're not going after the same leads, which is like a really sick thing. And like one of the, one of the guys that like, he works so hard, dude, but I think, um, I, I think for me, it's like find someone who, who, you know, when you leave, okay, here's the best thing I ever heard. Um, you want to be around, and this is, this applies to anyone, whether you're being first or second, you want to be around people who will intellectually stimulate you. And here's a really good indicator on figuring that out. Um, the people that you're around will either make you feel one of two things envious because of the ability to do nothing or envious because of their ability to do everything. And I think people, especially with that are extremely wealthy, the ones that really inspire you, inspire you to work harder, not work hard to do less. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a really good guideline of sticking out. Like, do you leave a gig with that you first shoot with feeling like, man, I, I feel like I, I understand my process a little better. I understand the business a little better. I left feeling a lot more um, in educated in how I think and also how to think differently. So one of the as things- As opposed to just being a hired gun. So one of the things we talk about a lot, because people ask us about team building, and I, there's two ways I look at team building. One of them is people who I want to keep, and one of them is how do I get the best product? And they're not always the same. Yeah. Uh, um, because the person who I want to keep is a person who loves doing one thing, but not all the things. So they, right. they don't want to have to deal with getting leads. They don't want to have to deal with sales or wedding planners or all this stuff. Right. And we tell people, Hey, if you're looking for seconds, who will stick with you associates that you can have for years, find people who love to do one thing, but not all the things, or find someone yeah. who tried to do all the things and decided they hate it and they're done and they just want to shoot or they just want to edit. Yep. Like that person is looking for someone to give them work and they want to yep. work. Um, but the other side of looking at it is if you want to create the best possible product, find the best possible people. And they're, yep. and with what we do with my companies, we have stop, go love. We have Huxley film and they have two different ways of operating. Yeah. And they have different price points too. And so I think when you're looking, how do I build my stable of people, whether it be yeah. employees, people who you call in a pinch someone who you work with regularly i don't know probably by by the way most people probably you're hiring a contractor and someday the government's going to come after you because they're actually your employee so get yeah. that straight <laughs> <laughs> for sure <laughs> somebody works 40 weddings for you that's an employee <laughs> <laughs> they're not yeah. a contractor <laughs> but um but all that being said like what's interesting to me is like when i look i even called you hey will you second shoot with me i don't mean second shoot i mean like lead yeah. shoot like I want you, I want your, I want your thing for yeah. that wedding and find if you're trying to create something that's at a price point, first of all, a re, like a step that, that second shooter, I'm going to pay them like a first shooter. Yeah. I'm not going to, but my other products, I'm not going to pay them like a first shooter. And yeah. I think what's important for me is like that the pay reflects the responsibility Sure. And so if, if the payment that I'm giving somebody reflects like stand behind this camera and don't screw up, I would expect to get that shooter. You're right. But, but if the payment reflects like I should be able to die and this couple won't know. Yeah. <laughs> and the, the film will live on. <laughs> I should be able to expect that. And I think just knowing what is your business goals and then building your team to fit those goals, I think is really, that is where most people probably are. They're in this weird place where they want to create this great, great art, but then they want to make money, right? And then they want to have people they can depend on and they have all these goals and they, they really actually seem to conflict. Yeah. A lot of times because like anyone who's good enough, like David Lee is not going to be my employee. Eh, you know, it depends. Probably. The right number, it probably happened. <laughs> sure, but I probably would never pay you that because then that would be all yeah. my money. <laughs> So, so it's like, <laughs> but you're, you have you to know, find the, this tension, right? The, the, the rate game is so interesting to me though, because I've, I've kind of always said to your point, like, I, it's not just like the severity of the workload, but I think it's also like, if let's just throw out a number. If, if, if you're shooting a, a wedding for $3,500, mm -hmm. which I think is probably a good number of people. Sure. Um, probably most. I think it's important. F I think it's important for you to identify what are you paying yourself? Mm-hmm. 
and be transparent with that with your shooter and tell them that we're getting equal pay. Because if you break down the cost, like, and I don't know why there's suddenly a major rise with like second shooter rates. I'll be totally honest. Like for most people, I'll probably shoot your wedding for 600 bucks, like second shoot for you. And I will pour in just as much effort as I do with Henry weddings. Yeah. I pay or, second you know, shooters uh, and I have no shame in this. And anyone who comes at me about it, I will show them my margins and I will tell them you don't have a real business. If you don't understand this, Yeah, I pay my second shooters three fifty. <laughs> but they are guys who could not lead shoot for sure. There are people who show up and they're and like, they stand behind my camera. They literally, I'm like, here's your eight shots. Here's a shot list. Here's a yeah. video of all the shots you need to shoot. Here's, I'm going to take you and train you on how to shoot these eight shots. That is their extent. Right. When, they, <laughs> when they get good enough and when, when we review their footage and we're like, hey, you did a great job, then we up them and we put them in. The second you're good enough, I'm not going to put you as a second. I want to shoot another wedding that day. You're going to be a lead. Yep. I'm going to give totally. you your own wedding, and I'm going to yeah. pay you a lot more. But it's like that's yeah. how we do Stop Go Love. That's how a volume brand works is like you can't yeah. pay your second shooters that much and you need to have like a talent development strategy with seconds so for us a second shooter is someone who we're developing to become a lead yep 100%. so they're in between an assistant and a lead we don't hire yeah. we don't hire people to second shoot who could run, shoot their own weddings just as yeah. a rule for stop go love the other yeah. side woo, with huxley film is i'm going to hire someone who i can so i can produce Yep. I need someone who, I, who will take all the pressure off of me. So when I get to that look, I'm going to be like, hey, I'm going to go to the site and I'm going to make sure the lighting that we did is set up properly. Make sure you shoot this yeah. one. They're yeah, so, they're so different and the product is yep. so different. And, the, and because we defined it really well, like I don't have like, like uh, when people are like, oh, you're paying that guy 350. I'm like, he doesn't even know how to set the audio up. <laughs> Of Which course, is actually my case right now. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to pay that guy more than that. I'm going to pay him what he's worth. Like he's yeah. still getting paid like $30 an hour, which is, which is hard because in some cases for me, like ironically, the guys I've hired so far have been minorities and they work freaking hard. Oh yeah. Even though they don't know Jack about audio in this case, like I was showing him the mix <laughs> pre Mark two and he was like, wait, you don't have to worry about, wait, it's a mixer and gain. What's the difference? I'm like, Oh God, <laughs> it, it doesn't matter. Just make sure there's signal. I don't care. It's 32 bit flow. Just make sure I'm getting signal. <laughs> <laughs> and, but I, I digress um, in saying like, and you know, I don't know that my business model, I think, I, I think long-term I'm probably not gonna be shooting winnings for forever. I think honestly, I'm more passionate about getting people through the journey of being a, a videographer mm -hmm. to becoming an artist of their craft. Me too. You know, because, because I think if we can elevate everyone to that point, then there's no reason why we can't all be charging more and getting paid more, yep. you know? And I think mediocrity is okay if that's your, if that's your brand. Um, I think you just, just call it what it is. Oh, that's a small you know? quote. Mediocrity is okay if your brand is mediocrity. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's true though. Like don't, don't come at me and tell me that like, you're, if you hire me, like, you know, if someone hires me for, you know, it's a wedding $300 and it's a, it's a volume brand. And, and I look at their work and it's probably super basic, which there's nothing wrong with that. Like I'm probably not your, I'm not probably not the best return on investment for you. No, in regards that's to the like, whole point, you know, is that's <laughs> the whole point of what I'm saying is like, why would I, yeah. when I can why? hire this guy to do it, who doesn't, isn't the most skilled. Like, so I think of it like this. When I was in the music scene, I was in a very elitist snobby scene of snobs, um, hardcore and punk rock. And if you show up at the show, right. And you're wearing the wrong t-shirt. You oh, could <laughs> you could get literally physically assaulted. It could happen. And and I remember telling kids like all the time, like, you literally that's that's the same shirt you bought when you first started getting into heavy music, right? Like, there's an entry point for everyone, is what I'm saying. Yep. And yeah. like every business can't be an entry point. Yeah. And so you need to decide if you're trying to be a person who how do I get good associates how do i get the right associate is a better way to put it yeah because not everyone needs good ones but you need the right one i think yep. you need to decide am i an entry level business and that is not an insulting thing it's just what are you trying to make am i entry level yep. or I, am i trying to make something that requires a certain level of skill do i need to hire yep. henry or can i hire random 19 year old kid and 
Yeah. And I'm going to get the same result. Yeah. And I think <clears throat> that is a, just an ego question for you, the artist, you, the leader, you, the boss. Like when you're trying to build out that team and you got to be honest about it. Cause if you could save yourself a lot of money, if what you're really trying to make is something that you could pay someone $300 to help you with, but you're paying $800 because you want to impress people on a message board or <laughs> like, yeah, like <laughs> it does like, it just depends. It just depends. And it's yeah. like, it starts with very honest conversations. Um, and the, I like to first say, how much are people willing to pay you? That's yeah. pretty much it. <laughs> yeah. If people are willing to pay you eight grand a wedding, why not hire an $800 second? And, and the thing is, is, the barrier of entry for being a quote unquote good second shooter is so low. Mm -hmm. Literally, all you have to do is nail focus, white balance, and expose mm -hmm. and not be too shaky. And like, that's it. Like it's, it's, I mean, it, I say that it's not that hard either. It's actually it depends on who you're people. shooting for too. <laughs> sure. But you know, the barrier of entry is actually extremely easy. Then it becomes a, okay, cool. I've got the basic stuff down. I just got to shoot super well. Um, and I, I say all this to say, I think I've just heard of a wave of people that are just really upset with their second shooters. And, um, my whole thought behind this whole thing was just like, I think you're the problem. Like the first shooter is the problem and you like, you're not, well, it's, it's not that you're hiring bad people. I mean, in some cases you are and they're extremely toxic, get them out. But in other cases too, it's like, you're so caught up in doing the same thing over and over again that like, you don't let it breathe. Like no one thinks the way you do stop implying it on people, yep. you know, like let them be who they are. And like, you, you'd be surprised at the, the stuff that you'll let them create. Like my guys have no reason to be good. Like honestly, in a typical setting, but I kind of kind of gambled and said, like, go do your thing. And they did. And some of the stuff I got back, like my recent Instagram post, I think two of the shots are actually my second shooters. And it looks freaking great, <laughs> you know? And it's just, like, the beauty of just, like, the, the freedom of creativity, I guess. I think just – In that sense. And forgetting even second shooter, lead shooter, um, it's just company culture – what you're trying to make, whether you're a photographer or a videographer and you have associates who lead for you or all your associates are always working with you directly, whatever it is, it's all about creating freedom and space for people to be themselves. I think is really important. Just, this is a practical example. We have this one kid, he, I would call, I always am like, he's like a prodigy. He's like 20 years old and really good shooter. And like, we always were like, Hey, everybody put the 24 on the gimbal. That's the shot we're doing for the yeah. season. And he's like, screw that. <laughs> and, <laughs> and so he starts like, we started getting some footage back and we're like, Oh, why does this stuff look so much better? And then he's like, Oh, I don't want to use that lens. I only use the 50 on the gimbal. <laughs> and then we're like, Oh, get rid of all our 24s. We're all going to do those next year. Like, yeah, that's the impact <laughs> it had on our company. And the product yeah. we make is like letting him. And we didn't care. Like we were cool with him. He, he knows he can do whatever, but like yeah. letting him do what he wants to do that he feels is right creatively allowed our company to get better, allowed all our shots yeah. to get better because we were like, Oh, that's actually the shot I wanted the whole time. Yeah. When I think about it, when I see it, when, and like, and talking a little bit about how he's using it and, and where he's even holding it like, Oh, well I like to hold it here on my chest instead of up here or yeah. down here. And like we're working as a team and when you can have people. And so I would just say this, and kind of we'll, we'll close soon, but what has been kind of for you the best part about, I would say, creatively growing up in a collaborative environment? And how has oh, that impacted man. what you're doing currently? I, I think it's the ability to throw out ideas and honestly, like, see them succeed and fail. Like, it's, it's having a soundboard to talk through because I think we can, a lot of the times... Uh, nicks an idea because it seems stupid and the, so we don't even try it what like tell me before. an example of that oh man uh like a real world behind the scenes you know and like th there's like a there, there's like this pose i did in I, like we did in iceland right where uh, i had the couple literally like do this like and just like i was like yeah just um grab hand <laughs> didn't say grab your hand i said i said grab hand like i tried to make it as awkward as possible like just We'll like, see it, and like I, I even like one of these. Yeah, just like just just do this. Like I don't know, <laughs> I, I don't know. Like just just feel each other's hands, whatever that means. And uh, <laughs> I honestly was just like, this is gonna be the dumbest thing in the world. 
and it was one of the sickest shots I ever had. But like, I and I told the couple, I'm like, this might be really stupid. I just want to try it. <laughs> and I think it's being really transparent. And I think collaborative environments don't necessarily have to be with just your shooter, mm-hmm. but it can be with your couple. Yep. And I think we often forget that. And I think they, they enjoy knowing the process of like, you know, like, oh man, like we're part of creating because they are. And I, and I think like the, the notion that like to be creative, you have to be around creative people. It's not necessarily the case. I think you just have to be around the right people who make you feel a certain way. And it's, it's like, it goes back to the whole thing. Do something that's going to make you feel like you're emotionally in it mm-hmm. and creatively in it. You stay know, it engaged. inspires you. Yeah, stay engaged. And sometimes it doesn't always look like something cinematic, but it's something that you feel with people and the interactions. And so like having that collaborative environment and making other people a part of it can easily make it much less stressful to like create something that you probably would never have that had had the ability to create in the first place. Because honestly, the whole point of having a collaborative space is that it's it's a collective idea, not just yours. Mm-hmm. You know well, and, it's and, the ability to manipulate it. The thing I would say is with what we get to create on a weekly basis, really, there, there's sometimes you lose time, I think, to really collaborate and you have to remind yourself, yeah. oh, I have to actually talk to my team. We have to communicate. Yep. But when you, yeah. when you do, like, like I remember I shot a wedding recently and I have, I've been working with this weird idea of like out of focus stuff of yep just i'm like i'm and i don't even know what the idea is i just i have like i want to think of like in terms of like a pad in music yeah yep like almost like a visual drone yeah i don't know how to describe it and i haven't got it yet exactly how i want it but i told the guy i'm like i did this stuff and i i just can you just make sure it makes it in the cut (laughs) because i i want to like i want to experience it I was shooting yeah. it and I, and I'm trying to, and, and like, he's like, okay. And, and I know for a fact, if I didn't have that conversation, he'd be like, what is this crap? And he wouldn't use it. Yeah. And it's like, and we might find that we like something a lot yeah. when we work together and we, and it's so the last thing I would say is, and I think you kind of alluded to this, but I'm just going to drive it home as a leader, as a business owner, as a producer, whatever you, if you're running your own thing and you're working with associates, please, please work on your communication skills. And I don't just 100%. mean not being rude or, or even like this whole abstract concept of inspiring people. There's so much pressure yeah. over that. Like, okay, let's just be yourself, but please find a way to communicate clearly what you want and what you expect and what you need. And like, I think you will go very far if people understand what you want and understand what your intentions are exactly like you were saying before, like, oh, I'm building this brand with Henry. I know what Henry's going for. I know what I can bring to the table to help him get there. Like, you know, so I, I think like this second shooter stigma that you talked about is really when they're not viewed as being part of the creative process. Right. And you're not allowing them to feed into you and you're not. And at the end of the day, like you said, you're not pouring into them. Yeah. And, and I think, I mean, on a really short note, like I think ultimately too, to add on to what you said, tell them how you want it to feel mm-hmm. because people, especially people who are just starting out, don't really know how to shoot cinematically, but they'll know when something mm-hmm. strikes them emotionally. And I think if you give them that extra, like, I, I just want it to feel very warm, very cozy or whatever, be as, you know, verbally uh, inclusive about it as you want. But I think if you can give them that kind of feeling, like, this is how I want it to feel, they'll know when they get it on screen. Mm-hmm. Like, you'll know. Well, and, and they'll, or, they, or you'll understand their vocabulary, their creative vocabulary a little more. And you can help yeah. either work, to lean into it or maybe redirect yeah. it. But like, if a person's like, oh, I did warm. And you're like, eh, that's not what I would consider warm. <laughs> and yeah. then, <laughs> yeah. and then you get that. But that's good. You created yeah, a. It's something. You created a moment where you can calibrate. Yep. Right. And you need those. You need to create moments to calibrate your relationship with the people you're making art with, even if it's a disagreement. Yep. Like. And we've had disagreements all the time. <laughs> mm-hmm. Even if it's like, well, I like that stuff. Like yeah. me and Jared, I'll always be like, I want to do like these non-linear edits. I want to do like. Or, or like parallel timelines or like all these ideas that are interesting to me. 
because movies I like, to be honest. Yeah. Um, totally. And he's like, I don't like that. That's cheesy. <laughs> he's like, I don't want to do any of those cheesy things. I just want, oh, I want it, I want it to feel really warm and organic. And I'm like, but those people yeah. were boring. <laughs> I'm like, that, that couple was boring. I don't like, if we tell their actual yeah. story, it's going to suck. <laughs> yeah. And I, and like, that's a good tension. Yep. That's a really good tension to have because I'll push him to do things a little more wacky and he'll push me to be like, not be just bizarre. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, it, it becomes a challenging moment. Cause then it's like, prove me wrong. Like I'm, I'll let you prove, I'll give you the opportunity to prove me wrong. Yep. And it's like, cool. Challenge accepted. <laughs> Those are the best people. And so like, I think that is a great way to end it because it's look for people that challenge you. And like, maybe you don't want this relationship with your seconds like that. And if, if you don't, then I would say, look for people who will work for the rate that you're willing to pay and don't screw up. That's But easy. I think it's important to have them occasionally. Like you should have in your rotation, maybe three weddings that are like bangers mm -hmm. that you hire a strong gun. Mm -hmm. Even you if know, you way overpay. It, it, it's an investment for you. Mm -hmm. It's a just, you know, invest in yourself, mm -hmm. you know? Totally. I think that's important. I think so too. And I, and like that, I think everybody should pick, this is a random bit of business advice, but what we do is we pick our best weddings of the year and overstaff them. Yeah. And I don't care how much it costs me to produce it. Cause I know I, this is going to be, this is a moneymaker. And if it comes out a certain way, and I, and I feel bad saying this because it doesn't mean I think any less of, a, of our other couples. Sure. Yeah, yeah. But it just means like here's an, a business opportunity. Yep. And in like work. So if you don't know who that person is when you need that person, like that sucks for you. Like you need <laughs> – like I know I have yeah. the relationships developed with the, the shooters I trust and the people who I – whose their vision is what I'm trying to get. Yeah. And I've worked on that and we're going to keep working on it by the way, but but we but I see both sides cuz I make both products. Yep. And I see both sides of it. Which is kind of weird. Which is so sick that you can do that though. Like I I think that's a that's a if if you can manage to balance both like that is like the key to success in my opinion, mm -hmm. especially in this industry, like yep. being able to do volume and do specialized. That's awesome. So we've had this unique opportunity to make what we make and make both sides of it and and, you know, I've really enjoyed building a team of 1099s and, and working with young people um, and inexperienced people. And so if you're thinking, like, I don't want to work with scrubs. I only want to work with amazing shooters. Um, man, it will stretch a different muscle in your brain to work with someone who doesn't know anything. And it's awesome. And I encourage you yeah. to do it. Um, 100%. Because you, like, you will be pouring into somebody's life. You'll be changing their life. Um, really honestly, there are people who are working in the creative field now because we gave them an opportunity to hold a bag. And I think, I think you could agree with this too, like seeing them succeed, like there's no feeling mm -hmm. that can really describe it. You know, like knowing that like, man, I'm so glad I was able to see them through that journey mm -hmm. and like see where they're at now and just making like them making their own thing yep. and like owning it. It's just like sick. Yeah, but it totally is. It's also great to get, sometimes they become employees and they become it, like integral parts of your ongoing team and other times they never are either they're just rich fairy who's my in my opinion he's my creative superior in many ways but i get to make cool stuff with him like it's like imagine yeah. if you were creating a band and you could just have like any guitar player you wanted help you make the band just for one session yeah you <laughs> it's worth it yeah you're like oh like oh this you know i'm gonna have eric clapton play here and slash will play on this track and all these people and it's like you get to, if you get to do that like i would encourage you to do if there's a shooter you love ask them to shoot see what they say <laughs> like that's probably better than like hey can i can i just shoot a wedding with you it's like nah dude just bring them on with you and like pay whatever price it is and like it'll it'll be a fun time yeah <laughs> totally <laughs> So, hey, man, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, why don't you tell a little bit how people can find you really quick? Uh, you can find me on all the wedding form groups on Facebook. <laughs> 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 but, 
<laughs> especially the ones with the Lumix S1 where I trash it. I'm totally kidding. That's the Vision Quest joke for those who actually talk to me about it. Um, but I'm on Instagram a lot in, on uh, David Lee, which with one E, I should specify, uh, .co. Um, and that's also the name of the website too. But uh, And YouTube channel, which is ironically going to be called David Holds a Camera, mm. um, where I'm going to try to start making a content, trying to challenge people to... Uh, be more of an artist than than just a, a basic photographer or videographer. Like just and, and making it an integral part of your life. But um, I hope that this would be something that can help some people out there, especially yeah. on the second shooting side. You know, get good, get good. That's fast. what it is. So hey, David, thank you so much. Um, hey, if you have not subscribed, what is wrong with you? You need to subscribe because I promise you we got some sick content coming up and you need to be alerted about it. Um, if you don't know how YouTube works, um, I'm assuming that you maybe are new to Earth. Um, and so for those of you that are new to Earth, we have a thing called YouTube. There's a bell that you can press, which will give you alerts. Subscribe. Check us out on Spotify. Check us out on Apple Podcast. Um, we got some different content, some of the same content. But man, however way you want to receive it and ingest it, we're putting it out there. So definitely check it out. Thank you so much for listening to the Wedding Pros Podcast. Have an awesome day.